Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I will be providing you with a short review of a long lens. This is the TT Artisan 90mm 1.25 aperture lens for G mount. There it comes in several mounts, M, E, and G. I don't there might be others. Um, and so this opens up some options for GFX um, that we don't currently have um, and some interesting possibilities. Currently for Fuji GFX, the fastest native lens that we have is the 80 millimeter 1.7 and there aren't any 90 millimeter focal length options. So if this is any good, this TT Artisan 90 millimeter 1.25 could be considered compelling for at least two reasons, speed and focal length. But with an affordable price of 515 US dollars, um, that becomes a third reason this could be interesting and probably why lots of you are watching this. Of course, in choosing a lens like this, you're also choosing to shoot in manual focus only. This does not have autofocus capability, of course, and that's not always ideal for everyone. But for me personally, with a system like this, where the autofocus system is unreliable and slow anyway, um, the, the, the GFX 50R, according to modern standards anyway. It's, um, I actually find myself absolutely fine with manual focus and that's just the way that I use this camera anyway. Um, those of you shooting with one of the newer models of GFX um, with more reliable autofocus might miss that, but, but for, all, for those of you like me who don't mind manual focus, that's, that's not an issue at all. But manual focus aside, many of you know how I feel about how obsessed the enthusiast photographic community is with shallow depth of field um, and a preoccupation with bokeh and spending copious amounts of cash for glass, all with the seeming intention um, of prioritizing what is out of focus over what is in focus. And let's be honest, the reason that many of you are looking at this lens is for the salacious interest you have in bokehaliciousness. So let's scratch that itch first and see how this lens does when and shooting wide open and I have to say that if that's what you're after you might find this lens satisfactory in portrait type situations you'll get exactly what you want with that tasty background cream pie If your subject is a bit further out, however, you'll start to see the optical quirks of this lens become manifest with some nervousness in the bokeh, as well as some spiraling entering into the frame in the background and certainly in the foreground. Stop down a bit and you start to see some other peculiarities like these ninja star style bokeh balls from that 10 bladed diaphragm. But if you're like me, these optical imperfections might just make this lens more enduring rather than put you off. I personally have no problem shooting with um, lenses that bring a bit of character with them rather than absolute optical perfection and precision, which often can make photos, for me anyway, feel sterile and uninteresting, but that's just me. But as we move away from the background and spend a bit more time focusing on what we arguably should be focusing on anyway, like, I don't know, maybe the subject of the photograph. Um, we're not disappointed there uh, by this lens either. Even wide open, this lens is very sharp and when you couple that shallow depth of field with that um, sharpness of what is in focus there in the middle and the center of the frame, it can provide very interesting contrast, giving you that Benazir effect, which is what draws many people to the medium format for environmental portraiture. For me, I really enjoy using this lens to isolate um, subjects in lifestyle or documentary situations, and I think it's one of the potential strengths of this lens, as long as you don't mind shooting manual focus in these situations, which might cause some lost shots if you don't have a lot of experience shooting that way. I also have to say that I was really impressed with how this lens controls chromatic aberration. Um, that is an extremely common issue with budget lenses, but with its four sets of achromatic doublets, it really does perform as advertised in that area. But that's where we start to see the fun and compelling aspects of this lens end, and we start to see some of the issues enter in. The first issue that I had is that it's hard to always shoot wide open, especially on GFX. Now, if you live in Europe or you're nocturnal, shooting wide open all the time is not gonna be much of an issue, but where I live, it's sunny nearly all year round and it's hard to shoot wide open with medium format and not be hampered by shutter speed limitations and having shots be overexposed. If I want to use this lens outside more for documentary, I probably um, need an ND filter. And for me, I don't really like the idea of adding more glass in between the sensor and my subject, but that's just me. 
Um, so I do tend to stop down with lenses like this. But when you stop down, you start to see other limitations of this lens. While the vignetting is um, apparent when shooting wide open, it's impossible to ignore when shooting stop down. And you start to see that this lens really isn't optimized for medium format. The image circle simply isn't wide enough. And for me, this is a deal breaker. While I do love that this lens can, sh can isolate a subject in a documentary style situation very well, where I want a longer lens for medium format is my rural landscape and rural decay work. And this lens in those situations is not ideal. Stopping down, I do find that this lens possesses um, adequate sharpness in the center, like I said. Um, and even in full frame territory, it's plenty sharp. Um, but it definitely all goes to hell at the edges or corners when you start to go beyond full frame, leaving me to conclude that if I were to use this lens on location, I'd need to plan on cropping to remove that vignette and the breakdown of the image quality at the outer limits. But at that point, I might as well be saving money and shooting full frame, which negates the value of slightly larger frame that the GFX provides. Another slight turnoff for me is the maximum reproduction ratio of 1 to 10 and a minimum focus distance of about a meter. This is not a lens that you can get up close and capture details with, which let's admit um, with a razor thin depth of field, sometimes you want to be able to utilize that with close up work. And so that is definitely a drawback. I, I love shooting close with lenses. Um, and you can't with this one. Not only that, but I've also heard it reported that the image quality is reduced drastically when shooting up close um, at the minimum focal distance. Um, but that isn't something I personally tested very much in the couple months that I had this lens, um, but I've seen plenty of examples to believe that. Finally, the last issue that you will have is with flaring. This lens doesn't have any sort of coating um, provided to control the flaring, um, and you'll definitely see that. While it does come with this bayonet style lens hood, it's not long enough to really provide um, a lot of help to reduce incoming light. And man, that flaring, um, it does crazy things to the picture. You'll see the light flaring, um, reducing the contrast, which can run amok with your image quality, of course. Um, but on the other hand, as I said before about character, sometimes you can take crazy characteristics of the budget lenses that you have and roll with it, like I did with this headshot shoot. That rim light shooting towards the lens created a really interesting effect here that me and my client really enjoyed. Those issues aside, the one other aspect of this lens that I do like is the build quality. Um, as a manual focusing lens, it does have very smooth aperture and um, uh, focus. The focus pull is, is nice and pleasant um, and you can do it with one swing of the, the hand. You don't have to sit there and crank it. And like I said, those aperture detents are, are nice and easy to use and it's beautiful. It's a pretty lens with uh, um, nice solid metal. Yeah, it's a good, good build quality and I enjoy using it. But all in all, I have mixed feelings, as you can tell, about this lens. I can't come down too hard on it because of that compelling price and because of the plain and simple fact that I really enjoyed shooting with it. Um, and hopefully that came out in the photos that I've shared with you. Uh, I really looked forward to pulling this out and using it um, day to day and as we went on various adventures and activities. And at the end of the day, really isn't that what matters most for enthusiasts? On the other hand, I can't use this lens for my serious work, my rural um, landscape work. And for me, that's disappointing because that 90 millimeter focal length is actually perfect for the look that I'm going for. But I really don't want to remember to plan on cropping um, and thus negating the whole point of shooting with medium format. And doing that just messes with me being in the moment, so it's not an option. But for headshot work, for indoor documentary work, especially if I, if I wanna bring a bit of character to my shoots, sure, I wouldn't hesitate to use this lens. But that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this short review of this interesting lens. And until next time, remember to do good with your camera, and we'll talk to you again real soon.